because the church didn't have a roof in the main part, the, the side rooms did have rooms, like the first two rooms when you come in to the church on the left and the right, and our sacristy, um, they all had roofs. They ended up having the service inside the sacristy instead, instead of out in the open. So what they, the priest used to do would come in through this door over here to the right, um, where the archway is at, which was connected to the convento, which we now know it as the Long Barrack. The Long Barrack is our oldest building, our first hospital, and there's a really nice 17 minute video that tells you all about the Alamo. You don't need a ticket, it's absolutely free, so make sure y'all check it out when y'all leave here. I don't want you to miss out. So this um, room right here was really meant to be a courtyard. The, it was never meant to have a, a roof. The sun would come shining over, illuminate through the window above this door here. So it would be able to light up the room so light would come in. Now we just discovered in 2009, if you look above this door where y'all just entered, you'll notice that there's an archway above there. Um, whenever you see an archway, you'll also know that it was done during the mission period time. Anytime you see a squared off, just like the door with the uh, wood on the top, that was done by our U.S. military. Now we became part of the United States in 1845, which the military came, and they used the Alamo as a storage room. So whenever you see that, you'll know the difference, but in 2009, we actually discovered that archway and we left it open for everybody to see as well, too. But I'll give you all some time if y'all want to read the panels that are along the wall. Please take your time now to read the panels. If anybody has questions, let me know.
arriesgada. Presente. Las almas. Al hombro. Las almas. Al brazo. Las armas. Al hombro. Las armas. Media vuelta. A la izquierda. Al enviarse. Con la izquierda.
writes a series of letters, desperate pleas for reinforcements. One is addressed to the people of Texas and all Americans in the world. He signs it, victory or death. Couriers, risking their lives, slip past Mexican lines and deliver letters to Texan colonists to nearby Gonzales and Goliad and more settlements to the east. Soon, Texans everywhere know of Travis's desperate stand at the Alamo. Troops rush to assemble, but are unable to arrive in time. In Goliad, troops head to the Alamo, only to turn back when they learn that another Mexican column is coming for Goliad, too. Eventually, 32 men from the town of Gonzales, 75 miles away, arrive at the Alamo on March 1st, 1836, eight days into the siege. But even with these new men, the defenders of the Alamo only total about 200. The siege lasts almost two weeks. And in that time, Santa Ana cuts off all access in and out of the Alamo. In the early hours of Sunday, March 6, 1836, the defenders are fast asleep. For the first time in 12 nights, there's no cannon fire. The silence is a tactic. Santa Ana is planning a surprise attack. But the strategic silence is broken by his own men. When Mexican soldiers, unable to contain their enthusiasm, begin to shout, The rebels rush the walls and fire into the darkness, manning their stations. On the north wall, Travis is one of the first defenders to die with a single gunshot to the head. As Santa Ana's forces push in, many of the rebels fall back to the long barrack, then to the church. Some defenders make it outside the walls, but one by one, they are cut down in bloody hand-to-hand -hand combat. Bowie dies in his sickbed, bayoneted by Mexican soldiers. The battle only lasts about 90 minutes. <laughs> True to his word, Santa Ana shows no mercy. He executes all surviving defenders, but spares the women, children, and Travis's slave, Joe, who he allows to leave unharmed to tell the story of what happened. Crockett too dies in the battle. Although accounts differ on what happened, one eyewitness states that he is captured alive and then executed. While Joe later recounts that Crockett died fighting like a tiger. Some 500 Mexican soldiers are killed or wounded compared to the 200 or so rebels who lose their lives. Santa Ana denies the defenders a proper burial. He scorns them as pirates and orders the bodies burned. What the defenders of the Alamo didn't know is that during the siege, a convention gathered at Washington on the Brazos had officially declared Texas's independence from Mexico. At the head of Texas's military forces is Major General Sam Houston, a former governor of Tennessee and protege of Andrew Jackson. Houston arrives at Gonzales on March 11th to find 350 men gathered there, ready to march to the Alamo's aid, but they are too late. Wanting to stay ahead of the Mexican advance, Houston withdraws eastward. Terrified civilians, afraid of being left behind, follow in his wake in what is known as the runaway scrape. On April 21st, 1836, Houston turns and engages Santa Ana at his encampment on the San Jacinto River. As they charge into battle, Houston cries out the words that still resonate today. The member of the Alamo. Houston's army kills more than 600 Mexican troops and captures Santa Ana himself. Astonishingly, only nine Texans die. 
the captured president general is forced to recognize the Republic of Texas in exchange for his life. The Republic of Texas is born. In 1845, after 10 years as an independent nation, Texas joins the United States, and the U.S. Army occupies the Alamo. The long barrack is converted into a storage depot for military supplies at the start of the Mexican War. After the war's end, by 1850, the U.S. Army uses the church as a warehouse, and the Alamo becomes a vital Army hub. A roof is added to the church along with a bell-shaped gable to the top, giving the Alamo its iconic facade. In 1877, the Army moves to new larger quarters. This is the last time the Alamo is used as a military outpost. But it's not abandoned for long. As the railroad expands across Texas, San Antonio grows as well. Soon, the city expands over the river towards the Alamo, and the property becomes valuable for development. A French businessman named Honoré Grenet buys the long barrack and converts it into a garish warehouse and general store. And 12 years later, in 1883, the state of Texas purchases the church, which is to be maintained as a shrine to the men who defended the Alamo in 1836. The rest of the Alamo remains in private hands. As the 20th century approaches, instead of offering protection, it is the Alamo itself that needs to be protected. In 1903, when a developer wants to demolish the long barrack to make way for a hotel, Adina de Zavala, the granddaughter of the first vice president of the Republic of Texas, and Clara Driscoll, whose grandfather was a veteran of the Battle of San Jacinto, begin a public campaign to save what remains of the historic building. Driscoll advances $65,000 to buy the long barrack on behalf of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. In 1905, the Texas legislature reimburses Driscoll and designates the Daughters of the Republic of Texas as custodians of the Long Barrack and Church, ensuring the Alamo's survival as a shrine to Texas liberty. In 2011, the Texas General Land Office becomes custodian of the Alamo to ensure that this sacred site is here for the next generation of visitors. Remember the Alamo, once a rally and cry in battle, still lives on today. But why? For many, it's because the Alamo stands as a testament to the fight against tyranny. It is a monument to human courage. It is the cradle of Texas liberty. And, after withstanding 300 years at the crossroads of culture, faith, and power, the Alamo has come to represent the independent spirit of Texas itself.